Eight years ago, I was preparing to leave my home when my then three-year-old grandson, Doug, asked, where are you going? And I said, I have to go to a meeting. What for, he asked. I guess, to save the world, I said. You can't do that. Well, I guess I better tell all those other folks. And then he said, you can't save the whole world, only a little bit. I think he was onto something. And his thinking has informed much of what I've been doing for the last eight years. It certainly is part of what I'm hoping to do with this campaign. When I look at what's happened during these eight years, I'm struck by the signs of collapse. The old way of doing things, it's no longer good enough, if it ever was. The old solutions have proved to be woefully inadequate for the challenges that we face today. And what are those challenges? Wow. On a global scale, we're facing the twin existential threats of catastrophic climate change and the potential for nuclear annihilation. We're also faced with a worldwide war on the working class and the dawn of a new Gilded Age where oligarchs plunder the planet and one third of the people on Earth don't know where their next meal's coming from. We're blundering our way through a global pandemic where over one million people in the richest country on Earth have died, where access to quality health care is a problem for an ever-widening swath of the population. But, but, health care profiteers are raking in records, record amounts of, of money. I could go on and on. But you get the drift. In the face of these crises, it would be very easy to give in to despair. The problems are so big and we are so small, seemingly insignificant. But that's where Doug's wisdom comes into play. I can't fix the climate, but I sure as hell can work to make sure that any well pads in Butler County don't go unopposed that we erect figurative and literal roadblocks to their construction. I can't stave off nuclear annihilation, but I can reach out to my neighbors, not condemn them as ignorant Trumpites or lackluster liberals. I can listen with an open mind and not erect artificial barriers. I can't end the war on the poor and the working class, but I can choose who I do business with. I can buy local when possible, and keep my money circulating in the local economy. I can't feed the world, but Karen and I can to a large extent feed ourselves, share our surplus, and teach others how they can do the same, but also support the local agricultural economy. I can't save the world, but I can be neighborly, and being neighborly is building people power. I have a friend who's one of the fiercest anti-frackers I know, but he's also one of the fiercest tea partiers I know. I was in D.C. at a Black Lives Matter rally in front of the Justice Department shortly after the execution by policemen of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. I looked up, and there my friend was. I was surprised to see him there. We talked, and at one point he said to me, Mike, you know... You and I can agree on 80% of things. Let's win them, and we can talk about the other 20% at our victory party. Tea Party, Green Party, in many ways, we want the same things. But the ruling class would prefer that we spend all of our energies fighting amongst ourselves and not, not fighting for the 80% of things that we agree on. And then they throw us some crumbs to placate us. To get to where we need to be, we have to get to know each other. Quit demonizing. I'm the mayor of a small borough that voted for Donald Trump. I've held elected office in that borough since 1989. My neighbors are not stupid people. They are people who have been screwed over by the system for decades. And my guess is that your communities are the same way. The Democrats ignore communities like mine, and the Republicans placate us. And then they ignore us too. Both parties pay attention to the people who legally bribe them, the oligarchs 
and plutocrats and their army of lobbyists. My neighbors see right through the politicians and they hate them, red and blue. Last summer, I was part of a group of people who walked from Scranton to Wilmington, Delaware. Along the way, we met with communities in urban, rural, and suburban areas. In each of those communities, we heard about the failure of government. Another thing we heard about over and over was a sense of power because in each of those communities that we walked through, people had organized to push back against injustice and won. They beat multinational corporations. They beat lousy government rules. They beat politicians on the take. They did it by educating and activating their neighbors, organizing them into fighting forces, agitating and obstructing the forces of evil. I get it. I get it. We're not there yet. We're not going to win this election. No one said this fight was going to be easy. However, I'm running to start the process of building a movement that will win in 2023 in local fights. I'm running so that in 2024, we're in a better position so that we're a force to be reckoned with. However, I can't do this by myself. I won't do this by myself. If this campaign is going to be successful, each and every one of us has to reach out to our neighbors. We need to find things that we can win, and then we need to find ways to win them. We Greens can't be passive activists. The plutocrats and the oligarchs want to paint any movement that hopes to organize the working class as out of the mainstream. I'm sure you've already encountered the notion that we Greens and, and the libertarians are spoilers. Don't even get me started on how we can spoil something that we all know is a stinking pile of bull excrement. However, if we are organizing in our communities, winning fights, small and big, with our neighbors at our side, it will be hard to paint us that way. Ten miles from my boyhood home, on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, Dr. King said, We are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. Yeah. It was fearsome then, but this is a fearsome time too. A time of urgency. And we must respond with vigorous and positive action. Get to know your neighbors. Get organized. Get your hands dirty. And power to the people. 